What's going on guys, it's Voodoo Gunner here bringing you guys a brand new video today and I'm going to be covering a quick, a quick, quick, quick uh, subject on Clash of Clans, defending versus farming versus pushing. Uh, yes, it is possible to push while you are defending. Yes, it is possible to to uh, push while you're farming. Um, the reason how, the way these work is farming is just essentially somebody going ahead and taking out your town hall and once your town hall is gone they sometimes leave uh majority of the times people will just come in for the town hall and they leave uh that's pretty much that um now how you defend with uh, a base is layers always make sure that when you create a base you want to have layers uh and by layers i mean you want to have Walls in between items. So like if you want to create a really good farming base. If you want to make something that has um, a good, a high, a high chance of stopping people from getting all the way in. You want to strategically place your, your defenses. Now when I make a base, I always like to, first of all, close off my town hall. Because regardless... Um, why can't this wall stay still? Because regardless, your town hall is your number one priority when you're creating a base. Whether you're farming, whether you're high, you're making a hybrid base, or whether you're pushing, it doesn't matter. So your town hall always has to be protected. If you're farming, people usually put town halls on the outside with some defenses around it, just to give a little bit of an extra umph. So when you design a base. Uh, I'm gonna create a small defense base, uh, not a farming base, just a just a basic defense base. And then in future videos, I'll show you how to create a base that's made more for pushing or you know, I don't know, hybrid making. You know, whatever you want to make, it's your base. You decide. You decide how you want it to be. So um, when I make a base, I usually want to take some of the basic buildings or structures or even the most used and i want to keep them close to my town hall such as your your clan castle because your clan castle is what's going to trigger this is your last line of defense to protect your town hall or your base these are the guys that that whether your your enemy triggers them first or triggers them last these are the guys that are going to protect you till the very end these are your kamikazes so after you've decided where you where you want to place your your clan castle, you want to go ahead and start off with some basic defenses. So we're gonna place some expos here since I'm a town hall nine. Try not to keep everything so close together. If you clump everything together, it makes your base tighter. And if they're using lightning spells, lightning spells have a have a range damage on them, so they can target. Like if I were to have this expo close to this. Uh, clan castle and they lightning spell that it would actually damage my lightning spell a lot more than if I were to keep it one or two spaces apart So after you've decided where you want to place your expos aka defenses you want to work on your resources not because you want them to be Right off the bat inside your base just because you have to plan these out these layouts ahead of time because if you don't protect your resources well enough, they'll be too easy to target and too easy to take. So we're going to go ahead and place a couple of these uh, elixir uh, storages close to these expos. And then you want to go ahead and maybe put, I don't know, an air defense near it and another air defense near that one. This is a start off of a defensive base. This is automatically starting to, to target air because our expos are set to air and ground and automatically our air defenses are set to air so there's really no no other set with that now with the introduction of the air sweepers you want to go ahead and take um you want to use them wisely don't use them to the point that they are automatically going to get taken out or you don't use them in a way that it backfires your base always remember that when you use your air sweepers, you want them to complement your air defenses or your 
air set air, air bowls or your air bombs or air sweepers whatever you want to use so like for this example we're gonna go ahead and rotate these this way and then we're gonna rotate this one uh that way now what this does is like if somebody tries to get into our base what's gonna happen is these air sweepers are gonna push them out and then these air defenses are gonna work on getting them get, taking care of those air defenses or those air enemies for you can't get my words out so that's that after you've pretty much set up the way you want to do i usually like to do my elixir my dark elixir because dark elixir is really hard to get and that should be one of your other priorities that you want to protect so you want to defend it as well as you can so we're going to go ahead and place our barbarian king next to our air sweeper and then our other one next to our our archer queen next to our other air sweeper now what's happening is is that if anybody comes within this range your barbarian king is going to trigger and then not only is it going to trigger your barbarian king but if they get close enough your archer queen can back him up and vice versa so now that that's that you want to get some walls going now the reason why i'm doing this live and not doing a build is because i'm tired of spaces that people just build them and then you try them out and they don't work as well as you want them to so what this is doing is this is showing how the build is going to happen and how the defenses are going to work complement and work against each other because yes defenses can also work against each other if you have your archer towers facing the raw uh if you have your archer towers on the on too many on the left hand side or too many on the right hand side it could backfire on you and people can go from the left side if you go from if you build them if you build them too many on the left side it'll you know it, it'll work it won't work with you I'm so sloppy when it comes to talking. So now we have that. Now inside these areas right here where you have your air sweepers and all this stuff, you can place traps. Now I like to place my Tesla towers here because they're the easiest to put and they get really good range. And since mine are maxed out for my town hall, they will get the maximum amount of damage to the enemy. Once we've done that, um, you want to go ahead and place your last two air, def uh, air defenses, maybe close to your clan castle or maybe by the, by the expo. Now what we've done is we've essentially funneled our air defense right here. Anybody that comes in from this area over here is going to automatically trigger this and then my air, air defense is going to start working on them. And because we placed them not too far but too not too far apart and not too close together they'll work with each other to help each other to take out that dragon or that balloon or that lava hound or whatever it is so now we have that now comes the splash damage you want to always balance yourself out not only with air but with ground so you want to work on your mortars mortars are really important because of the fact that these are the ones that have the most range when it comes between air defenses and um, ground defenses the, the mortars and the archer towers these guys are going to take out smaller troops obviously they're going to damage bigger troops but smaller troops is where they really do the most damage such as barbarians archers goblins wall breakers whatever it may be so you don't want to place them in an area that they contradict each other such as this the this is actually they're working with each other because again once an enemy work walks it too close to one the other will automatically trigger so we're gonna go ahead and keep going that and then you could go ahead and place maybe a wizard I mean an archer tower here if it would stay and an archer tower here okay now we have our ground and some of our air def well our air defenses are done in some round so now we're going to go ahead and place another archer tower maybe here and here and then now we have a good range on ground attacks and then don't forget about your resources so we always want to place our resources not too close but not too far from each other just to make sure 
that if they're too close to each other, you don't want an enemy to come in and automatically start targeting one side or start targeting the other. You want to always give your, your enemies a challenge. So now that we've done that, uh, we could go ahead and place one of these cannons right here. And then we could place maybe... Let's go ahead and do... We'll place these here. These really don't matter. This is just to close off any entries that the base may have. The this way they don't they can't get in as quickly. And then now you see these little blank areas here. You want to fill them up with stuff. So you don't necessarily have to put a defense, but you could put a defense if you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a barrack here and a barrack here. Now that closes off that area. Now since we have this huge gap area right here, I'm gonna go ahead and place my laboratory here, and that takes that. Now if you look at it. Our base is pretty funneled it's pretty tight but it's not too tight it's got the right amount of defenses it's got the right amount of troops and everything is helping each other nothing is going against each other you don't have your archer towers that are clumping against each other you don't have your mortars that are that are taken away from the archers and you don't have your expos that are taken away from your cannon so after you do that you want to go ahead and place some walls down and then we're going to go ahead and zoom in. This is so hard to do on a phone. I wish, I wish I had my laptop working. Um, it's working, but it's not working. I don't know how to describe that. And then we're going to go ahead and finish this side off too. We're going to clear this out. And then we're going to... Is that right? Did I... Yeah, okay. And then we're going to come here. And we're going to close that off with these last few walls. Hey, thank you for the wizard, Matt. And that means that I can take care of that and remove that. Okay, there we go. No! That goes there. Okay. So now that our base looks like this, uh, I think, I think... Uh, there's our mistake. Okay. So we're going to move this up, move this up. Or maybe move it down? Yeah, let's move it down. Okay, move it down. Always make sure that when you create that when you create your bases, you want to always make sure that everything is, is not symmetrical. You don't necessarily have to make your bases symmetrical, but it helps when they're symmetrical because this way you can it's easier to follow one side to the other. You can mirror each other's side. And then now that we have that, we still have four resources total, and then we still have two of each. So we're going to go ahead and place uh, gold storage there, gold storage there, and then we're going to place our other elixir storage there, uh, and then the other one there. Now we have all those, and they're all pretty much covered. So then we can go ahead and place a wizard tower here. A wizard tower there and you don't want to place them too close you don't want to place them too far like I said uh, yes it's important to protect to protect your resources but always remember that no matter what kind of base design you get they're always gonna take some of your resources it doesn't matter what they do even if they just attack your town hall as a town hall snipe they're still gonna take a thousand nine hundred whatever it is that they take in resources so this is just, you do this enough so that your defenses themselves can protect and divert your enemies for as long as, they, as long as they can before they get to their resources. Sometimes they won't get to them, sometimes they will. It doesn't really matter. So now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and cover our, uh, the rest of our resources with these two mortars these two mortars are going to protect not only this elixir storage but that gold storage and that gold storage so now we have plenty of coverage there and again they're not working against each other they're, they're helping each other out once one gets taken out the other one is still defending it and trying to protect as much as we can now you don't want to build your base too low you don't want to build it too high you don't want to build it too wide Always try to remember that your bases will always be 
in one general direction just because that's how it is that's the flow of your base that's how you want it to be that's how you always want to build your, your base design you don't want to put all your defenses on one side because then it makes the other side vulnerable so now we've covered that we have a lot of we have a lot of our base covered and that's just with mortar coverage and then don't forget that you still have your tesla towers you still have your uh, other wizard towers some cannons and then the cannons actually going to come into play right now so we're going to go ahead and play cannon pay put cannons there pla 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 and then we're going to put maybe one here and then we're going to put another one here and that's covering our entire base when it comes to ground as you can see our more our mortars are protecting our cannons our cannons are protecting our mortars archer towers protecting the wizards and the wizards are protecting everything that's around them as well now this base is pretty decent it's pretty laid out um i'll complete it just to show you guys what it would look like once the base is done uh always use your extra buildings to create little funnels or little areas that you want your enemies kind of to be tricked by and kind of drawn into so we're going to go ahead and place these tesla towers here because this will start to cover and protect our resources and then now for these uh these resources over here we could go ahead and place maybe an archer tower here and on the other side, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Now we have our archer towers protecting that. Our cannon is slightly protecting our resources. And so is this one as well. And then you can go ahead and place your other two wizard towers here. And here. And then now we have a really good funnel base. Everything is really well protected. And we're going to go ahead and start working on the rest of the walls here and then we're going to go ahead and push this here and there and then yes i noticed that your defenses are out in the open but also realize that you still have plenty of little buildings and traps to place in front of them to protect so we're going to go ahead and keep placing this here We're going to go ahead and do that. Man, this is impossible to do with phones. But that's okay. We all survive, right? We're going to go ahead and maybe clear that out right there. Leave that little opening there. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. And then we're going to go ahead and keep going. And then there we go. Leave the same little opening open. And then that'll come into play soon enough. And then now that we have this area open over here, we only have 10 walls. We're going to go ahead and try to be a little smart about it. One, two, three, four, five. And then come over here and do the same thing. If I could, I would. All right, now that's that. And then this is where your little buildings all come into play. Okay, so you want to close off this area with as much little build as many buildings as you'd like. So we're going to go ahead and put one here, one here, and then we're going to go ahead and toss in an army camp here. And then now they have to destroy this army camp, these two barracks in order to get into that area. And then we're going to place our dark barracks here our dark barracks here now what i'm doing is i'm filling the holes the holes that are left in the base that are not that are that don't have anything in them because that means that your enemies can get in there sooner and then we're gonna go ahead and start covering over here we're gonna cover that up we're gonna put another one here maybe one here i want to put one here and here and here now our collectors why is this wall doing this i hate when walls do that now our collectors are spread out so it means that they have to use more troops to get to those resources and then we're going to go ahead and put this here wedge it right nice and in there and then we're going to do the same thing 
here. Let's uh, let's see how I can fit this in here. So we're gonna go ahead and maybe there we go. Oh, that's what it was. Ha ha ha. Okay, there we go. And then we're gonna cover that up and remove that and figure out why this is looking like this. Huh. Oh, duh. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. So we put this here. I'm going to put this here. And then we're going to put this here. And then move this back. There we go. There we go. That looks a little better. I guess. <laughs> Base design is not always something that you want to always work with I guess then we're gonna put this here and there we go that looks a lot better and then uh, I guess we could leave that as it oh, let's reverse it I have to have it the way I have to have them mirror each other all right so there's that now we have that area covered we still have three army camps left so we're gonna go ahead and wedge them here and then wedge the other one here and then we still have one left, so we could remove that. We could put this one here, and then we'll figure out where we're going to put this one in a little. So now we have that, and then actually I'm going to put this here. And then I'll put this one here. Alright, so here's initially our base design. This is what our base is going to look like from top to bottom. Kind of hard to get into, not something that's going to be amazingly easy to get into. So as far as trap placement, you can place all your traps inside these little wedges where you see these little blank spots. And then these big areas, you want to go ahead and place your big bombs here and here and so on and so on. But that's pretty much a simple base design. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or any more ideas, please don't don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section. I'm always looking forward to reading what you guys have to say. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please feel free to make this base yours or alter it any way you want or anything you want. Or leave an, a negative comment. It doesn't matter. As long as you comment and give me ideas, I appreciate it. So thank you guys for watching once again. Please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.